This is a school TV original. to the cook-up show. It's yeah, something different, you know, something relevant, something that stand out more. This is the cook-up show, man, and I just can't wait to, what we got in store for y'all, man. This is gonna be a great ride, and we just gonna do this, man. So, with that said, after this little commercial break, we'll bring it live, man. We'll be right back to Steam, everybody, with the boy live, you already know. You're the cook-up show. back man the first artist on the cook up show man Yo. first artist ever mr live mr man. live Yo, listen, man. Man. it's a little different it's a little different in laguardia yeah yeah yeah, yeah man that's different. love man you know what i mean yo so live man tell us man how you feeling man i'm feeling good man i'm feeling good man this is uh this is a good opportunity man this is 2017 it's it's time to, you know, really make some moves, man. So right. um, it's always good to see, you know, people that you've been doing it with for a minute and they doing the same moves you making. So right. shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to the cook up. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. If you guys didn't know, man, we recently changed the name from uh, Smooth, Smooth Day in the Neighborhood to the cook up show, man. And guess who was the first artist to appear on the uh, Smooth Day in the Neighborhood? Sure. Or at least he was one of the first ones. Let's I just get straight into your new project you got out. Talk to me, talk to me. Lifeline. Lifeline. <laughs> Lifeline. <laughs> Lifeline. Your life's on the line, like 50 said. Yeah, you know what I mean? mean? Tell us about this project. Like, what made you call it Lifeline? Um, it was really just, uh, I didn't know what to call it at, at a point in time. I didn't know if I was even going to put it out, but, um, Right. Um, I actually, the reason why I called it Lifeline because I ended up, I didn't realize that I made it, I started making tracks uh, just really, I mean, most artists obviously make tracks about their life, but I was really, right. you know, going through a storyline and I was really going through some things in my life that personally, um, you know, depicted what music, my music was. Right. So um, Lifeline, when I, when I just ended up coming with the name Lifeline, it was just like basically from when I was born to, you know, what I'm doing right now. So it was just basically that whole, you know, whole thing. And Not to cut you off, is, is each song on the project like a, a dialogue of different moments in your life, or is it just a um, layout? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is um, from, from the beginning to the end. It's just, uh, it's telling a story of, of who live is. And, um, right. and I think uh, I used to do that with a lot of my other mixtapes and uh, you know, a few projects I used to put out. But this one that I came out with, from the beginning to the end, you knew who live was. You know, whether you heard it from hip hop standpoint and whether you heard it from uh, uh, R&B standpoint, um, it was just my whole life. And, you know, it was either came as a fun track or it came as a serious track and or it came as a track, you know, how I felt about rappers, how I felt about love life, right. um, all that stuff like that. So that's what basically my phone call about. Right, deep, right, deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how many tracks you got on this uh, record? Uh, this this record, I think it has about 11 tracks on it. 11, 11 joints. There's supposed to be another two, actually. I might do like a bonus something or whatever the case may be, but. Like a sequel to the record. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, the next project I'm gonna do is called Nightlife. So, Nightlife, all right, that's yeah. interesting. So, like, um, I have Lifeline, and then Nightlife is, is sort of another storytelling mm -hmm. uh, so thing like about that. me. You know, it sounds like a darker shade. Yeah, so, but, but actually, it, it, in actuality, it's actually a, a lot more lighter and a lot more smoother than, mm -hmm. than the track, than Lifeline. Lifeline was more of a, like I said, telling a life story. Nightlife was just me escaping a lot of the realities that was going on, like, in the hood. And, all a bunch of shit, so it's, it's gonna be a lot of you know club tracks, a lot of girl tracks, you know. It is gonna be a lot of hood stuff too, but um, it's really just gonna show like the you know the whole nightlife aspect right. of things, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, the lifestyle, yeah, okay. the lifestyle of you know just going through things and in, in life and then really escaping it and yeah, through music. So will it be the track list will be minimized or will it have more songs for nightlife? Um, actually, uh, nah, man, it, it, it'll probably be just as much or maybe even more. I'm at like I'm at a point of just recording music and want to write music and just yeah, I love music so yeah. 
Yeah, that's so right. I want to get into your project. Like, I want to talk about the special parents. Parents. parents uh, it's a it's a specific line on there that was touching where he was like, um, "Just take care of your child support." And take care of your kid. Child support is not supporting. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was very important nowadays because it seemed like that's everybody's having kids now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you have a lot of deadbeats, then you have a lot of single mothers. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand as far as your mind state goes? Um, it, it, it stands as exactly what a song is. Um, I'm a father first before anything. Before I'm, right. I'm an artist, before I'm, you know, uh, you know, a son or anything like that, I'm a, I'm a father first. And, you know, I put that, you know, uh, at the highest pedestal mm -hmm. um, where it needs to be. And, I, you know, I push myself to be the, the best father I can be. And honestly, in the humbling part of it, I'm not a good father. I mean, You're not a good father? No, no, no. Uh, let, me, let me explain that. I'm not a good father is meaning like I'm not the best father that I want to be, but I try my best to be the best father I can be. You know, um, a lot of people swear when they become parents that they know everything. Right, and, um, right. They don't want to take, yeah, they don't take humble advice themselves. and learn. You know what I'm right. saying? And, and I, it was, it's a humbling experience to be a parent. And, and I, I learn every day, man. It's not it's the easiest task to do, but I learn every day. And, right. um, that's like, like I said in Lifeline, that's exactly where I wanted to, you know, really um, talk to people about my life and, you know, being a father and seeing other father figures and then I've seen, you know, another part that people don't want to take care of the kids. So. Right. Okay, with that said, um, what is your goal exactly to achieve as an artist and also as a parent? Um, so as a parent, um, I want to just continue to do the things I want to do uh, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, making sure my kids are healthy, making sure they got clothes on their back, food on their, you know, on their mouth, and, mm -hmm. you know, they're learning the right ways as far as, uh, you know, their growth. You know, you, we can't teach our kids everything, and life is going to teach them, you know, more than we, you know, think. But um, I only just want to do the best I can for them. And as an artist, um, I really, um, my goal has always been to, as an artist, is not just the benefits of, you know, being out there and, you know, having your music out there and making money and, you know, making a brand. Um, I definitely want my music to touch the world, yeah. you know, um, because I know what music did to me. I know when I listen to certain songs, you know, it hit me in a certain place, you feel me? And, yeah. uh, and I can relate to it. So when, when people hear my music and they tell me, you know, I can relate to that, yeah. you know, that's, that's like the biggest thing in the world. So if, you know, one person can relate to that, you know, I'd rather have the world hear my music and then, you know, get the feedback from there. So right, that, that's, that's the, great. Yeah, that's the goal that I'm going That's to. great. Now you talk about relating a lot. So right. what message do you want to get from, do you want to deliver to people when they hear your music? Other than the usual top, typical rappers nowadays, where it's just about money, hoes, and <clears> money, <throat> hoes. The lifestyle in general. And general. clothes. And clothes. And clothes. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, I, I really want to, I want to, as, as, as far as like you know uh, my music goes um, I'm probably humbling every other aspect of my life well when music comes I'm, I'm very confident in that and uh, right. <laughs> the, and like he, he laughing because you yeah, know it's like, like I know, you know um, exactly. the, the cockiness and, and, and everything that you hear in the music is, is really um, I'm at a statement and I think it was it was when uh, I think Kendrick Lamar had had came out with that control verse. Yeah, it's really when I oh yeah, he was blacking on everybody. Yeah, he was blacking on everybody, and he just you know mentioned I'm the king in of NY and LA, and I was like, hold up, nigga, I'm I'm, I'm in NY too. Like, <laughs> like, let me let me touch the platform first, you know. But um, as an artist, I just wanna you know uh, I wanna relate to anybody who loves music. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've had all walks of life, and I've talked to many people that had, you know, just, you know, different views of music and different views on, on certain things, but when they hear uh, real music and when they hear it from a real perspective, you know, yeah. um, it doesn't matter, black, white, Chinese, whatever, wherever you yeah, come from, sure. you know what I'm saying, you recognize real, and real recognize real, so I want my music, and, and, and what Smooth was saying, um, where it relates to, I want my music to relate to anybody who needs it, you know, anybody who wants it. That's the song, man. So what, what, let's talk about your singing we have, we have out. Yeah. Is, and the night goes? Yeah, yeah, and the night I believe goes. it goes? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, why did you pick that as your first single? Um, I picked that as the first single because I, I think, uh, before, prior to, you know, a lot of, a lot of times of me even coming out as an artist, um, I came out very aggressive and I was coming at every rapper. 
Right. Um, and I was just, you know. So you, I, you was the modern day Kendrick at that at that time. I, I was the modern day Bob. Cause ain't no, you know, <laughs> uh, oh, you what it is. You know what it compared to nobody, man. That's, that's, that's what's up, man. Right. Um, you know, they, he paved his lane into what he's doing, and I respect him as an artist. You know, um, I just defend my, you know, Brooklyn, you know, what it is. But I right. always, you know, I've always came aggressively, and you know, I wanted to show. Uh, you know, the different aspect and I can make songs and you know, a lot of people was actually questioning if I could make a song or not, if uh, I can, you know, you know, make collabs, you know, whatever whatever the case may be. So that's what uh End of Night Go, you know, ended up being ended up being, you know, a real breakout into who I was in the music aspect of it. Oh, uh, and I am glad that you just said that. That people thought you could have made songs. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, we've known each other for a long time, man, a real long time. And I remember when you first started rapping and at that time it felt like he was a rapper and I just watched your growth yeah. you know me personally I watched your growth yeah you was just about spitting bars I remember one time we was at LaGuardia Community College yeah, sure. you know and, and there was a shout out to LaGuardia Community <laughs> College man for real. That, real real shit though shout out to them but uh there was a some sort of uh party in the uh poolside cafe oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I remember you came up and you just rhymed and you controlled the crowd and what what okay. moment a like true MC. yeah a true MC man for real right. so right. like just describe that moment like cause you got the crowd hype man and I don't even think you remember that you don't nah, even nah, think I, about that nah, nah, I, do, I actually do remember that um that was actually a, a good moment for me uh, as far as like personally it, yeah. it wasn't really like you know the whole squad was there the shout out to BSG yeah shout out to BSG and all that the the whole squad was there and we we ended up I remember we came from playing ball and we was in there they had like a little talent show and. Uh, you know, we went up there to, I just went up there to, you know, do my thing. And, and we had, uh, I think the No Strollers was up there too. <laughs> uh, another another group of people that was uh No was Strollers, man, I forgot about them. Um, and no and they, Strollers. And the thing was, they, they came they came at the crew uh, during that whole little rap. They started saying a little something, and you know, I just felt like I had, had to represent. Yeah. I had for me, uh, but but the, the squad and... What you mean, um, like they, they attacked you lyrically? Or? Yeah, yeah, they, they was trying, I mean, it was, a, it was all in friendly competition. Was, was, I, I, would say, I would say it was the battle of the alpha males, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you know what I mean? Crazy. We was a big group, they was a big group. Yeah, you know, they yeah, wanted to, you know, yeah, grab yeah. their nuts, and we wanted to grab our nuts. Eagles yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. it. Yeah, um, and, I, and I felt like I just had to represent for the squad, and I don't even represent for the squad, I represent for Brooklyn. I, I feel like every time I rap, I always got to represent for, you know, where I'm at and where I'm from. Right. And, um, and people got to know where where that's at. And at that time, um, I ain't really had no whole bar. Like you know what I mean, the squad was behind me, so I wasn't worried about if somebody was gonna do something or nothing. Exactly. Nah, yeah, I'm always saying, saying that. Yeah, nah. But I mean, like that moment was just you know, just it was it was great to you know own the mic, kill the mic, and then um, continue to do it because after that, you know, it was just whenever a mic or whatever a freestyle moment or a cipher came out, I was. I was there. Oh, mind mm -hmm. you, yeah, and we was playing ball too. We was killing whoever we was playing. Yeah, I know yeah, that. You was doing scrubs. <laughs> First of all, you can't hold me. Oh, I know that. You can't God. hold me. You hold me. You clap on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you clap on who? You can't I even touch the back boy. You crazy? That's a fact. But you know what I'm hey, saying? Man. I got hops on the on good days. <laughs> anyway, no nobody pay green any mind, man. Please, man. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. on top of you saying you represent, you're a real big fan of. What's going on in the world today, as far as the killings yeah, of the political black? Aspect. Yeah, the political aspect. Let's let's talk about the Black Lives Matter thing, because I see you speak on that a lot. You even did a, a, a track about it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the Black Lives Matter thing was uh, it was a real actually it played a big part in um a lot of the music that I do even today. I you know I try to. You know, uh, enlighten a lot of people. I don't know as much as, like I said, I try to be as humble as possible. But from what I do know, um, you know, there's a lot of things going on with, uh, you know, our, our, our society and the community. Yeah. Um, right. And people are just now getting, witnessing, you know, what's going witnessing on? what's going on. They're just right. now getting it. And, then, you know, to me, I, I think they should just, you know, really sit down. Like, we have access to so much music, uh, information, all that type of stuff. We have access to that, and people don't want to use that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. The age of information, man. You know, we, yeah, we are in the age of information, and because we are in the age of information, people just want to be blind. I think people are just more lazy to the fact that, you know, uh, when they hear something, they'd rather just, you know, let it be than to do any research about it. 
you know. I think it's more of people are uh, cluttered with so much music. Yeah. That's not really touching anybody consciously. Yeah. And it kind of it kind of leaves them blind on what's going on, even though it's in front of them. But we're just so more into materialistic things of yeah. that nature and just the certain lifestyle. We, we can't get into political aspects. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's sure. Fact, that's right. a fact. But uh, listen, man, we're going to take a quick break, and, man, and we're going to... Uh, we're gonna talk to Lyle for a few more minutes, and then we're gonna get out of here. Oh, so, my bad. I'll talk to you more. No, 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 no. no, no. Listen, man, of course not, man. You know, you know we always good on the cook up show. We'll be back, though, you heard? So now you niggas fuck with me. Like blind. Haters. Haters. Well, now you niggas stop with Brooklyn. Me. Me. I just be moving some cup. Let's get it. Yeah. Shit. Shit. She just Let's think she the one for I ain't changed the game, I just added to it yeah. The flow was dope, now you an addict to it I was in the basement